Mr. Football League. I can tell you that the match day four of the Nigeria Professional Football League MPFL fixture between MFMFC and Warri was scheduled for this midweek at the Soccer Temple Agege Stadium. We now hold at the Teslim Balogo Stadium, Surulere, Lagos, by 4 p.m. on Wednesday, that is tomorrow. Still talking Nigeria Professional Football League this morning. I can tell you that after three rounds of games in the Nigeria Professional Football League, yes, this is the standing, I mean, the table where the, each of those teams are on the table. Yes, right there at the number one position, I have Plateau United with nine points after three games. Ayimba second with seven points after three games. FC Ifa Yuba seven points also after three games. MFMFC seven points also after three games. Lobby Stars occupy uh, the fifth position. Uh, six points after three games. Wikitoris, uh, six points after three games to they occupy the sixth position. <music> Worry Wolves uh, at the number seven. Yeah, at the number seven, five points after three games. Uh, Abia Warriors, uh, number eight, uh, five points after three games. Uh, Rangers International of Enugu, four points after three games. Uh, Delta Force, uh, four points after three games as well. And they occupy the tenth position on the log. <music> Talking of those teams rocking the uh, bottom of the league. Kano Pillars, they are on number 17, a point after two games. Adamawa United, number 18 on the log, one point after three games. Nasarawa United, no point after three games. Jigawa Golden Stars, number 28, no point after three games. <laughs> And quickly to the Ministry of Youth and Sport Development this morning. I can tell you that the Minister of Youth and Sport Development, Mr. Sondi Dari, on Monday met the Nigeria Football Federation to demand a written explanation, explanation as to the exit of Nigerian teams from football tournament. In that meeting that lasted less than 30 minutes, the Minister directed the NFF should provide the federal government with written explanation to the development of our teams failing in four major tournaments. <laughs> Yes, the minister said, and I quote from a stock taking, it is now time to render account to Nigerians. We need to take very difficult situations. We need to run a reality check. Nigerians are not happy with our state of football. We must start with the football administration. Nigerians want to see us working proactively to get things working again. I mean, that was the minister talking this morning. The minister also demanded for the nominal role of the NFF as it was reviewed that the Federation has continued to pay some people with expired contracts. All of this is coming from the media office of the Minister of Youth and Sport Development this morning. And quickly, let me tell you that the 2019-2020 Nigeria National League season will commence on Friday, 22nd of November, 2019. That's a quick one there. And now to the Nigeria Professional Football League match day four fixtures. Fixtures that are due to take place tomorrow, Wednesday, November 20, and Thursday, 21st of November. Yes, tomorrow it will be Wiki Torres against Delta Force, MFM FC against Warren Wolves, Rivers United will be at home to Rangers International, Aqua United will be at home to Katsina United, Lobby Stars will be at home as they will be welcoming Atland of Uweri, Sunshine Stars will be at Akure as they will be welcoming Ayimba FC, Nasarawa United will be at home to Plateau United, while Kando Pillars will travel all the way to Jigawa to face Jigawa Golden Stars. All these games will go down at exactly 4 p.m. tomorrow, while on Thursday, 21st November, it will be Adama, Adamawa United against Abia Warriors and Aqua Starlet against FC Ifianyi Uba. And away from the local scene this morning, I move straight to Europe, where I can report that former Arsenal striker Thierry Henry said he wanted to confront the disappointment of his short spell at Monaco by becoming coach of Monreal Impact. 
Yes, Sherry already said, and I quote, it's about coming back always, the story of my life. The only mistake you can make is not learning from what happened. You need to come back and confront it. I'm more than happy to have this opportunity with this club and city. Of course, Sherry already signed a two-year deal with the MLS side, which has an option for 2022. Yes, to Spain this morning. A strike. Yes, a strike. Talking of women football now. A strike by women footballers in Spain's top division has ended after securing an agreement to reopen negotiations over pay. All late top flight fixtures were postponed over the weekend. But now the Association of Women's Players has confirmed negotiations will resume and that the strike is off. Almost 200 players from 16 clubs voted to strike in October after more than a year of failed negotiations. Now we are happy that the strike has been called off. So our women can return to football. Talking of women football in Spain. Up quickly to some football stories. I mean football gossips this morning. West Ham will return to Rafael Benitez if they decide to part company with Manuel Pellegrini. That's according to the Miro this morning. Mauricio Pochettino has had talks with chairman Daniel Levy over his Tottenham future. That's according to the Telegraph. Chelsea's Brazilian midfielder Willian is said to snub a two-year extension offer and run down his contract at the end of the season in order to secure a move to Barcelona. Also, according to reports this morning, Brazilian forward Neymar has turned down the chance to renew his Paris Saint-Germain contract, which expires in 2022. According to reports in Spain, the Spanish Federation has offered Luis Enrique the chance to return as national team boss. And according to Tuto Sport in Italy, Manchester United's France midfielder Paul Pogba will prefer a return to Juventus than a move to Real Madrid. And Pep Guardiola's agent, uh, yes, Pep Guardiola's agent has not ruled out the possibility that the Manchester City boss may return soon to Bayern Munich. And according to report, a report from Old Jogo in Portugal, Manchester United could land Portugal midfielder Bruno Fernandes in January with Sporting Lisbon reportedly needing to raise funds to clear debt of around £57 million. Pounds. And quickly, Chelsea are keeping tabs on Jenks Norwegian midfielder Sander Berge, who has also come onto the radar of Liverpool and Napoli. <laughs> I mean, I've got a whole lot of football stories this morning. Arsenal are planning a scouting mission to assess Red Bull Salzburg's hungry midfielder Dominic Zoboslai. Yes, Dominic Zoboslai. He's actually 19 years old. So Arsenal are planning a scouting mission to assess his impact. If he's good enough, why not go for him? And if he's not good enough, then we just have to let him be. Okay, Juventus and Inter Milan have expressed an interest in Manchester United's England defender Chris Mullin, currently on loan at Roma, who are arguing over the £15 million pounds valuation. And away from football this morning, I move straight to mixed martial arts, the MMA. Yes, it was reported that an amateur mixed martial arts uh, fighter has died after suffering a brain injury during a match. Seide Aletaha was critically injured at a Fast and Furious Fight Series FFS event in Central Oil in Southampton on Saturday night. She was taken to Southampton General Hospital in the early hours of Sunday but died later that day, police confirmed. Armchair police said it had launched an investigation into exactly what happened. And they will come with reports any moment from now. And quickly to tennis this morning. Talking of the Davis Cup Finals 2019. Going down in Madrid, Spain. 
Croatia began the defense of their Davis Cup title with a 3-0 defeat by Group B rivals Russia as the new look tournament got underway in Madrid. Bona Gojo was beaten 6-3, 6-3 by Andrei Rublev and Bona Koric went down 6-7, 6-4, 6-4 to Karen Kashanova before the Russian pair combined to win the final doubles match. And of course, today it will be Russia against Spain. Well, if you don't know what the Davis Cup is all about, I can tell you that it's just an 18 nations uh, tournament. 18 nations are split into six groups of three, with the group winners and two ble- best placed runners up progressing to the quarterfinals. And the two semi finals will be played on Saturday, 23 November, with the two winners going through to the final on Sunday, 24 November. We are talking of the schedule now. Uh, the group stage it started yesterday, of course, 18 November. The quarterfinals will be played on Thursday, 21st of November to Friday, 22nd. The semifinals will come up on the 23rd of November, that's Saturday. But the final will be played on the 24th of November, Sunday. Yeah, that's everything you should know about the Davis Cup, actually. And it's exactly 40 minutes gone past the hour of 8 on the M side, right here at Pensioners 106.7 FM. Agbari go onireke ibado. The voice of liberation, of course, the first labor radio on the continent. Well, you know, the show is just for 15 minutes. And this is where I'll be saying bye-bye on the show this morning. Many thanks to my producer today, Tiami Yu. The DCA on duty, yet today, okay. Not forgetting Collins. He's been doing some underground work right here. We just have to acknowledge him. Yes, my name is Idris Abdiola. But before I go, do not forget to eat well, exercise well, and rest well. Good morning, and thanks for listening. Bye-bye. That was Spot Spectra with Idris Abiola. Join him tomorrow for another interesting episode. Ikani Le Pensioners FM 106.7 Leshiwa. Ito Tio Kambayini Akuko Agbarigo Emaba Akalo. Kwagbariko <laughs> I go make your pajas, Jumet, Logun, Summer Sabo, Ludo Juma, Lemma Bo, Quack, very go. Baba, we can wait the Baba Idi, Latin, we did it to me, if we did it, we shall never mention to personal safe, one of six point seven, and very good, we can let Padon, I could call very go. Emma, go out in the kitty, you'll see.